Hey guys, today I'm going to talk about explosions in general and also how to blow up obsidian and even bedrock in Minecraft 1.7.2. And first of all, well, uh, it, this is not about how to remove bedrock because most of you probably know this easy trick that you just need the dark oak saplings and if you plant a tree at the same spot several times, he will eventually uh, grow branches below and uh, remove some of the bedrocks as you can see here we remove this block here and some more and everywhere else but yeah now the question rises probably how am i going to blow up obsidian well and uh, maybe even bedrock below the first block here in the middle we see a torch so this obsidian will uh, yeah power the tnt and light it up and as you probably expect nothing is going to happen so the first question which probably arises is well what happens if you just use a lot of tnt and uh, well, to evaluate this question here, I made up a little demo setup over here. And this consists of a tower. They are all these dispensers here do have TNT inside, and we can uh, take a look in the inside for in a second. And they are all being powered at the same time due to instant wire here, triggering all these dispensers at the same time. And the start button is down here. So let me get inside, take a look. And this is a decent amount of TNT and if you just look up the blast resistance of obsidian and also uh, the explosion power of TNT, you might come to the conclusion that it should be enough uh, to blow up uh, obsidian when you just use this amount of TNT here at once. So what happens when you try this out? Well, a lot of TNT falls down and... Well, <laughs> that was quite laggy, but uh, you saw the point, it didn't blow up the obsidian and you could hear the, uh, the TNT not triggering at the same time, although it was ignited at the same time. Well, the reason is just how the game actually processes the TNT. Each TNT block, even if they are going to blow up in the same game tick, just uh, still they blow up one after another because the game evaluates the first TNT block and the explosion strength is just not strong enough to blow up obsidian. There's no chance, the value is just smaller. And then this next one gets evaluated. And usually you hear one sound at a time when they all get to, to be displayed in the same game tick. But if this is so laggy because so much TNT explodes at once, you can even hear that there is a time difference, especially when there are huge lag spikes due to... Uh, whatever uh, kind of uh, memory leaks for example and yeah so we will never be able to blow up obsidian just with using TNT but you can actually do a lot of other fun stuff with it so let me just quickly demonstrate something slash summon villager golem and yeah just roughly where we are uh, let's just actually put in a second one oops sorry guy uh, I'm just this stupid apparently. Okay, this one made it to the middle. Well, um, I'm just going to remove some of the uh, uh, redstone here so that you can properly see what's going on. Because that way not that much TNT is going to blow up at the same time. Alright, so let's try to blow up these golems. Da -da 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 -da. And the question is, where are they? I don't see any iron ingots dropping. They apparently just disappeared into nothing. And well, um, let's take a look above. Maybe we can find them somewhere. Somewhere distributed around here. Can't see them anywhere. This is quite unfortunate. But the reason is that those golems just got fired up. And uh, within a few seconds we should actually see them dropping down again. If we are lucky. Come on. There's the first one. Woohoo! And the second one. Woohoo! Yep. And down here. They don't get any fall damage, so they just successfully survived one explosion here. The second one will actually kill them. But the same happens if you go inside this cannon as well. So what actually does stack is the accumulative um, velocity an entity gets when it's being launched by a TNT. So you can fire yourself, which probably most of you know because I uh, even I uh, did already some TNT kind of designs. Uh, showed this already, but uh, let's just try it out one more time. Press F3. I loaded up the cannon completely. <laughs> See what happens. Yay! And here we are, 12 kilometers up in the sky. 
Maybe we hit 13. Come on, come on, come on. Yes! <laughs> Just hit 13. Well, the, r the height you actually reach here is a little random. So sometimes you only get uh, to like 3 kilometers. Sometimes it gets even higher. But, uh, well, this is probably going to take a while till I reach the ground again. And the night is rising. It looks pretty cool. But you saw this eventually already when I showed one of my t reloading TNT can designs before. They were the dispensers which could just dispense a lot of TNT um, over and over again anyway. And since this is going to take ages to get down, I will just kill myself to get back to the ground. And by the way, when doing these tests, I actually launched a l several hundreds of golems in total. Uh, with the full power cannon and for 10 minutes I was searching around in the super flat world till I found this first golem I don't know a kilometer away or something far far away <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so uh, this is a cool way to to just spread them out across your normal survival world build it such a cannon and then explore the terrain and just surprise uh, as a, a, a wild iron golem appears <laughs> uh, Anyway um, back to the point. How are we going to blow up bedrock? Well, um, this just works by using, uh, by adjusting the power strength of an explosion. So let's just try out to, f uh, to see how an explosion actually works. So you can summon fireballs. Uh, summon fireball, let's just summon it where we are standing. And you just give him the following properties. Direction and uh, explosion power is the interesting value. Explosion power. So, the default uh, fireball has an explosion power of 1, Well, which doesn't even blow up um, iron blocks. But we can pimp him up, 4 is the value of a TNT. And we get some decent damage here and also some blocks which drop eventually. But um, what happens if we increase this further? And the explosion algorithm was intended for explosion powers to roughly about 10. But you can already see this doesn't really look very explosion like anymore it already forms almost a square and if I go up to a, re a lot higher values you can see this a lot better um, that uh, yeah well you don't see it yet I guess I need to increase it even further that's the r there are the way the explosion algorithm actually works is that there are rays being casted in all directions and those rays um, yeah now you can see it clearly uh, they don't hit every block when you increase the power strength for too long. So you can see there's a ray going in this direction and in a lot of other directions, but there are already blocks in the middle remaining which will never ever get destroyed no matter how high you set the explosion power. For example, these ones here. They will always remain and only the blocks in the re direction of the rays are going to be removed. And you also see that we only get quite a few items, although we removed a lot of items in the air here. The reason for this is that <coughs> The chance of an item to actually drop is 1 through the explosion power. So the higher the explosion power, the less items you will actually get back. So now the question is, can we even blow up obsidian or bedrock with this or actually any other item? And the answer is yes, we can. There is not an infinite uh, yeah, blast resistance for bedrock. But let's first of all give you another demo on how cool these rays from the explosions can actually look like. So let's go into a freshly created super flat world consisting out of pure red glass, a layer of 230 meters. And I'm going to drop down here. Got a macro install to punch this glass a little bit quicker. Go to roughly the middle. Here we go. And summon uh, another uh, fireball, this time with an explosion strength of 1000. And this explosion is probably going to take a while to render, so let's just punch it. And it seems to be flying through everything because the server is still calculating the explosion. You can see uh, the memory going up. 16, 17, 18, 19, 20%. And I hear a sound. Come on. Come on. Boom. All right. And welcome, holy moly, to the insanely epic yeah, explosion cube. I would ca call this. So I'm, I'm going to get back up here so you can see better what is actually going on here. This looks pretty amazing in my opinion. Okay, come on. It's still moving away. And here we go. So actually let me get myself a little speed boost. And so you can see the whole beauty of this thing here. We got rays from the explosion in almost every direction here. The, the terrain is slowly loading in. So you can see it from over here. 
There are even more rays down there. Still rising up. And they stop around this point here because that's the distance they travel with an explosion power of 1000. And when we go closer again, well, this is what you get to see. We can actually increase the render distance even more. And uh, it looks very amazing in my opinion. Wow. It's looked like the Big Bang here. But you can clearly see the different rays being casted and only blocks being removed in those directions and not in every direction. So, now the question is, how can we remove Bedrock? Well, it's actually very simple. Bedrock and Obsidian do have affinite blast resistance. So we can just exp uh, create a fireball with a high enough blast force to blow them up. So here we are in an Obsidian flat test world. Some layers of Obsidian. I'm going to punch myself down a little bit. And, well, let's create another fireball. And blow it up. Oh, and voila! <laughs> well, that worked. Wow. So we actually even created a portal here because the explosion can also create uh, fire, as you know. Let's try this again. Hey! Blowing out obsidian is fun. And we even got an obsidian item right now, as you can see. And uh, you can see that there are not, of not a lot of obsidian items. The, thi the reason is that obsidian, uh, or in general, explosions do only drop one through power of explosion of the actual blocks they remove. So in other words, the higher the explosion strength, the less likely it is for a certain block to be um, actually uh, dropped as an item. And for that reason, it is a very low chance to actually get an obsidian item here. Uh, and, and chance of 1 in 500 and on average we are destroying way less than 500 it um, blocks here. But the same applies to bedrock. So I'm going forward now into a bedrock flat world. And so we will finally be able to blow up bedrock. So for that experiment I'm going to dig down a little bit. And create a little chamber here. Uh, the reason for that is that you can better see what's going on. And also, um, we might, I know the chance is super low, but you can increase the chance for it. We might actually get a bedrock item dropping as well, which would be absolutely amazing. So let me speed this up and uh, explain to you after that what's what I'm actually uh, doing here. Okay guys, so are you ready? The necessary explosion strength to blow up bedrock is roughly 1000? No, 10,000? No, 100,000? No, 1 million. And this is 100,000, so 1 million explosion strength. This will actually not take that long to render because this is solid obsidian. So the explo the race will stop very sudden, but there are still s a lot of loops the program has to go to, so let's just go for it. Yeah, the explosion roughly will happen in 10 minutes, so or I don't know, in, f in t uh, a lot of minutes, so I will just keep on filming and you will might be able to see the actual explosion happening. And by now the game is frozen, so I can just demonstrate this really quickly. Uh, the server doesn't react, the internal server, I'm in on single player, but... Uh, Redstone is not working, the sound is not playing when I'm placing blocks. I can't uh, clear my inventory because the game, the internal server is frozen while the client still works very smoothly. As you can see, no problem at all. But I can't do anything. Or the blocks are also not actually placed yet for the server, that's why you don't see them. But uh, yeah, yeah, f stuff like Redstone obviously doesn't work and those blocks are actually not saved into the game. So if you would relock, they would also disappear and stuff. The game is basically frozen, but no, uh, it's just as if the time was frozen because you yourself can still move, which is actually pretty cool. Um, anyway, so I'm going to sc uh, freeze the camera now and we'll wait for the explosion to happen. Hopefully that happens uh, as soon as possible. And here we go! Wow! Yeah, it took a while, but you can see... We unfortunately didn't get a single item to drop, but we definitely removed quite a lot of bedrock and also created a lot of fire here. Yay! 
Um, the thing is, the chance for a bedrock item to drop is one in a million, so that one item drops. Uh, in other words, uh, even when something like 100 blocks or so dropped here, you need to t do this t explosion 10,000 times on average to get a single bedrock item, but it is possible. So, yeah, that's it. It was just to show, yes, you can blow up explosions, of course you cannot do this in survival mode, because you would need... Uh, to be uh, have access to commands, or uh, actually you can p put this uh, in survival mode in commands if you are a cre uh, an operator. But let's have some fun at the end of the video, for example, just blow up some random stuff with these fireballs. Okay, I think this is a good place to start with, an amplified terrain generation, desert uh, village here, and let's paste in some fireballs. So first test, and... Boom! Yep, we can indeed remove water and we spread around a lot of random fireballs everywhere. This looks pretty decent. Um, let's see what happens if we fire this into the wall of sand over there. Uh, da -da 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 -da. And... Yeah, those explosions take a long time to calculate. Come on! All right, this, yep. Okay, if sand starts falling down, whoa, here we go. <laughs> uh, I don't know why I did, didn't display the uh, explosion sound, but yeah, this is a pretty amazing result here. Uh, actually, when I reduce the explosion strength a little bit, it should probably be even cooler because that way we don't have to wait for so long. Yeah, this works better. Uh, you can see how large the fire spread actually is. And anyway, messing around with these fireballs is so cool. Um, but, as you can see, you can blow up lava, you can blow up water, you can blow up as every single block uh, by just e adjusting the explosion strength. And uh, with this incredibly strange result here, I think I'm going to end this video now. Hope you enjoyed it. And um, if you want to, I can give you the world downloads for the different worlds so you can try it out yourself. And the command for these fireballs is also in the video description. Thanks for watching.